The following is a Metro Sports original presentation. It's getting hot, it's getting hot. You know, I'm getting nervous now. It's a couple more hours. Look, <laughs> I forgot to put some deodorant on. That's a no-no. You gotta put some D.O. on before you go anywhere. And try to do everything at the last second. Man. I'm trying to find my shirt. I have no idea where it's at. And I thought it was hanging up in the closet. I'm pretty happy. I'm a happy camper today. Too much room in my room. Yes. See, Grandma! Grandma! You need to come help me so I can get these link cufflinks on again. My cufflinks! Oh, goodness. Grandma! Never mind. I made it. Never mind. Come on! You call me? Yes. What? Need some gas money. Hey. I do this quite often. Dressing up. I like dressing up actually. I used to go to St. Monica. That's a Catholic school. And they used to make you wear ties. So I had to learn how to tie a tie. I like fat night. Just like that. Final touch. The jacket, man. Yep. <laughs> well, let's see how can we work this thing. I'm gonna try. Since nobody in my family was at Ty Ty. Man. Think that's good? Is it good to go? No, you don't know. Ah, I'll take you around twice. Oh my gosh. Whew. See, that's what I'm talking about. This is where the stretch comes in. You don't even know how to tie a tie. <laughs> It's tough being a teenager. It doesn't matter where you live. But here, it's even tougher. The Kansas City, Missouri School District has a national reputation. Excuse me. Excuse me. It's not good. And at home, if you even have a home, most likely, it's not good either.
Hakeem Kearns is a senior at Lincoln College Prep. He's your typical teenager. Steady girlfriend. He's fighting for an A in French class. He's the bruising running back who gets all the tough yards. How you doing, sir? He's got a part-time job at the movie theater. Be to your left. Enjoy your show. Akeem Kearns appears to be your typical teenager. If you looked at me at school, you you couldn't tell. You know things that I I go through and deal with. This is what Akeem is dealing with today. And we got kicked out the house. We got evicted. And we got all crammed up in my grandma's house now. My grandma, me, uh, my mama, my two little sisters, my uncle, and his son, you know, all in a two-bedroom house. This is where the majority of the sleeping goes down. My sister sleeps on the futon. Got a couple beds here we let down. There's my uncle, man. He gets off at nine. Just to do that at all. Yeah. Two people living in one room. It's kind of stuff everywhere. This is where I, this is where it gets real, real nasty. We got everybody clothes. Everybody need to wash. Somebody go cry about, man. I gotta go pay this bill for my my cell phone and blah blah blah. Your cell phone bill is fifty dollars. And I'm thinking to myself, you spend fifty dollars on a cell phone. I wish I had fifty dollars to give to the to the white people, so we can have some lights in the house. Eighteen-year-old Aisha Kabeen is a senior basketball player at Paseo Academy. She lives here in this one-bedroom apartment, alone. No roommates, no parents. I hope this don't mess this shirt up. Leave big brown spots on your shirts. Her diabetic mother recently began losing her eyesight and moved back home to Atlanta. I learned that everything ain't supposed to necessarily be a handout. You have to, if you want something done, you have to get it done yourself. Leaving Aisha with her stepfather. She didn't stay long. He would get drunk and he would get high and he would be hitting on me and my sister. And it's not like a reprimanding hit, more like you somebody out on the streets and I can beat you up and whoop your whoop, 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 whoop. That's the kind of hits we would get. I have absolutely nothing in here to eat. I have an old orange. I have cheese. It's a piece of bread in there by itself. <laughs> and the stink. <laughs> I'm not gonna be eating that. <laughs> mm, I think it's some rotten fruit in here. Mm, that does not look culture. Mm. <laughs> I got a lot of macaroni. <laughs> okay, now let me tell you why all these cans are up here. I don't have a can opener, but everybody, when they want to help, they get canned goods. So <laughs> I'm not able to make no mashed potatoes and gravy, no chicken and gravy, hot dogs and pork and beans. And I can't even eat that because I don't have a can opener. <laughs> hey, it's candy up there. That's about it. <laughs> Goes to Hicks, and he'll have the first down and more. Ten, five, can he get there? <laughs> This is Central High senior Ricky Hicks. Ricky Hicks to the edge. And this is Tina Hicks. Get in, get in. Ricky's biggest fan. Oh my goodness. And biggest critic. Where you going, son? Where you going? You going backwards? What you doing? I tell him, man, that wasn't good. That wasn't good at all. I don't know what he was thinking on that one. Oh my God. Why you do that? And this is his dad, Ricky Hicks Sr. Good run. Come on, son. Stay up on your feet. Good work, baby. Good work. Unlike many of his teammates, Ricky has both parents at home. When I usually sit down and talk to like older people, they can always tell that I have a father in my life. They can always tell because they're 
I don't act like everyone else. I, I kind of distinguish myself. Like my daddy always told me, your first impression is your most important. Oh, it's Superman. That's encouraging right there, Superman. I feel once I step on the field all day, can't nobody stop me. Some people might call it cockiness. It's that time again! I just call it confidence. It's that time again! Hey, we smash them in the mouth! They can't play with blood in their mouth! They can't play with blood in their mouth! Oh, nice, oh, long! Take a peek through that locker room! Take a peek! Man, look at them, they standing around, they ain't ready for us! Ricky Hicks is confident. He should be. Life is good. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. His biggest problem today, what college he's going to attend for free. Yep. This is where I lay my head every night. I got all my letters and different stuff down here. USF, you got Minnesota, Wyoming, Michigan. Got some K-State, got a lot of Mizzou in here. I don't know who that is. I don't know why they kind of, this is about basketball. I didn't play basketball from high school. Well, okay, here's one. Dear Ricky Hicks, on the behalf of our coaching staff and University of Wyoming, I would personally like to invite you and your parents to our annual senior day. You watch TV on uh, Saturday, watching them college plays, you always dream about, man, one day I want to be right there. You always hear them talk about scholarships, but as a young boy, you really don't realize maybe that could be you. Delfino Jaquez is a senior at Northeast High School. He's the starting point guard. He does all the little things coaches love. However, there are no scholarships waiting for Delfino. At school, Delfino is usually smiling. Who is this guy? I don't know. Weezy. He plays the role of senior quite well. He's an ugly dude we've never seen before. That's a bum right there. That's a superstar right there, man. The face of Northeast right here. Bad news where it happened. Dalen, he's still fresh. The youngest of four brothers, he will be the first in his family to graduate. Hey, we about to get one more person, all right? Let's go. Hopefully she's in here. Come here, Ms. Perkins. Yeah, this right here was my ninth grade teacher. She failed me. She failed me in ninth grade year. And she regrets that, am I right? No, I don't. Are you nervous that this they get you? Huh? She a bad teacher right here. Delfino normally comes home to this. His two older brothers playing Madden on his PlayStation 2. He losing 20-0, man. Bam. Today, they can't find the other controller. I give up, man. So they switch it off. Watch me come back. <laughs> Hold on, man. You get four quarters, man. Hold on, man. The game was a Christmas gift from Delfino's oldest brother, Juan. Are you serious, dog? There are pictures of Juan everywhere in the house. He was killed Delfino's freshman year. Every time I walk through the door, that's what I see. So this right here is the only thing that's keeping me, keeping me going right now. It was Easter. We were all at my old house at, by the park. We out there just getting together. Nothing big, we just making some hot dogs. You know, he said he's gonna get some hot dogs. He took a long time. We was waiting for him to come back. And I just see a whole bunch of cops just fly by. You know, we see the ghetto bird up there flying around. I thought it was just normal, high speed chase. We we're like, man, you know, just messing around. I wonder what happened now. And then we're like, man, we called his cell phone and everything. He'd answer. So I start driving around, uh, see what happens, and I see a lot of cops on 27th and Jackson. I seen a lot of cops. Then I seen his van right there. He was like, oh man, it was it was one. It was my brother. Something happened to him. Try to watch the news, see what you know, see if anything's on the news, and it says some breaking developments. I got home, turned on the news, Fox 4 talking about it was a shootout with the cops. A man was shot and killed by a police officer in the East Kansas City, in the East Side Kansas City neighborhood. I'm like, huh? I hope that ain't my brother. Then they talking about he got killed. I thought I was just daydreaming or something, dreaming. You see the van, they didn't release the name, but you recognize the van, you knew it was him, and you still don't know what happened, you know? My mom didn't know, she was still sleeping. Then as soon as she gave the news, it was just crazy. It's like my penitentiary right here. <laughs> so I can't leave the house. I think I'm a mama's boy. <laughs> Mama, daddy boy, name him. <laughs> Cousin boy. Perdama que yo soy un niño de mamá. 
<laughs> told you, I'm the little baby. So she ain't trying to get rid of me, you know. Sometimes I don't even let me go to the mall. I'm trying to get some free time, she still don't let me get no free time. I really can't blame her, you know, but... Hey, I gotta do something. I can't stay trapped in the house for all day. <laughs> After Juan's death, Delfino's mother gave him a choice. Drop out of high school and work, just like his older brothers, or stay in school and try to graduate. Calm down, okay? And get your head in, because you're going right back. I started thinking about it. I need to go to college, try to get more money, you know, because I ain't trying to stay over here in the hood. I'm trying to get out. <laughs> I live in the suburbs a little bit. Well, he seen the environment we was in, you know. He seen one day, you know, me and my brother were outside playing basketball, day, late at dark, and, you know, we got shot at. And he got hit, he got shot one time. You know, he seen that environment, you know, and he made it through, you know, and he just like, you can see it in his eyes, like, man, I'm gonna get out, the, I'm gonna get out this bad neighborhood, you know. Everybody says they want to get out, but they really don't want to get out because they say, I don't want to leave the hood, you know, because I do this, I'm gonna stay, you know. I tell everybody, you know, what the hood gonna do for you? It's, it's not gonna do nothing. You know, it ain't gonna make you happier. It's gonna make it's gonna make it worse. It's gonna make your life worse. You know, you want to prove that you can make it out of public school. Well, we can't count it yet. We gotta make sure he graduates first. <laughs> Graduation. According to a recent national study, less than half of these students will make it to graduation. The kids that go to high school here live in the poorest neighborhoods in Kansas City, in an area that produces the most crime in the city. This is the urban core, the inner city. East High School. It's where the Interscholastic League plays varsity football. It's Friday, six o'clock, three weeks into the season. The one bus carrying the Southeast Knights arrives. This week, head coach Jay Lumen has enough players to play, 17. Kids in there that want to play football, and that's what it's about, playing football. 17 want to play. If we had 11, we'll play with 11. Tonight, they will play the Central Eagles. They arrive on two buses. For Southeast, some of these 17 will play organized football for the first time in their lives. Ones that have no experience, the rookies, we would call them, you know, they're probably a little nervous or whatever, but we got some veterans in there that's trying to encourage them and, you know, show them that, you know, we can, we can do it with 17 players. Head coach Jay Lumen tells stories about David and Goliath. I told him I was proud of them for being out here and playing. I just wanted them to dig deep in their heart and to keep fighting and scratching and clawing. It doesn't matter what the score is, they're winners. I just don't want them giving up on themselves. You can only play 11 at a time. We number one. Take it. Hut, hut, hut. Set, hut, hut. Go, go, go. Set, go, 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 go. For number 18, Antoine Day, Fielding a team this season is about more than playing football. Hoping I'm going to college next year. Lizzo 58 dollars on one. Lizzo 58 dollars on one. Ready? <laughs> this way, y'all. Run it this way. Day wants to use this experience to get an athletic scholarship. So he personally recruited his Southeast classmates to join the team. Oh, I made it happen. I got my team together. People saying we weren't going to have a team this year, and we're out here, and we're going to play, and we're going to make it happen. Head coach Jay Lumen's been coaching a long time, almost three decades. Hustle, hustle, hustle. Give it everything you've got, okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Right here, let's go. On, get her done on three, all right? One, two, three. Get her done! He's seen it all before. 
He knows the reality of 17 inexperienced football players taking on a larger program like Central. You're going to see 22 young men out to win a football game. Win. It's the same thing you're going to see no matter where you go. They're going to kill that kid. Whoever steps up between those stripes is going to go to war to win a football game. Safety. That gimmick. You know, some of these kids have some difficulties. Most of us have difficulties, and these kids are strong enough to overcome what's thrown at them. And I think a lot of it has to do with uh, why they play football because they get taught the life lessons that football has to teach. And that's, I think that's why they're here. <laughs> what Dan do, forget to snap the ball? So I said he forgot to snap it. Come on, Dan, you gotta snap the ball, buddy. You all are better than this. You have lost concentration. You've lost everything. You're like looking at a bunch of dead fish in a barrel looking in your eyes. Where's your heart? These guys are winners. Win, lose, or draw, these guys are winners because they're out here playing. And that speaks volumes to me. That kind of commitment demands respect from just about anybody. Yeah, get him another helmet. Go in there, get in there, Tank. Hold it, hold it, get Tank going. Watch me on Metro Sports! Go, go, go! Woo! <laughs> yeah, I try. I, you know, I do what I do. I do what I can do. There's no storybook ending here. This is life in the Interscholastic League. The IL. Teams win, teams lose. And for the Southeast Knights, just becoming a team is enough. You know, life's not always going to treat you fair. You're not going to win every battle. But you don't have to lose the war because you lose a battle. you dad gone right. I'm proud of him. I'm mad at him right now, but I'm proud of him. If that makes any sense. <laughs> it hasn't always been this way. This is what 100 years of history looks like. The alumni room at Northeast High School is a time capsule of the past evidence that these schools were once the envy of the Midwest when their sports teams set the standard for quality athletics. The good old days. This is a 1927 championship basketball. That's when I was born. <laughs> this is a tennis team and a golf team, which would be a little bit different. Velma Showalter, class of 1944, enjoys flipping through some old yearbooks. Here's of the pool and the girls are getting ready to go in. She knows it doesn't look anything like today's Northeast High School. Oh, they had a bowling team here. Across town, Paseo Academy showcases its athletic accomplishments as well. It's a small trophy case tucked in the hallway next to Paseo's gym. While there are no more tennis, golf, or bowling teams in the IL, soon Paseo Academy won't have any sports. They have already dropped football and will soon be phasing out the remaining sports at the end of the school year. Athletics director and girls basketball coach Caleb Clifford knows he won't have a job in a few months. No other school in the state of Missouri does not have athletics. Paseo Academy does not have athletics next year. Aisha Kabeen plays for Coach Clifford. Here's your chance. Here's your opportunity. They don't think you can do it. They're laughing. They don't think this is going to be a game. She's not the best player on a team that has won only one game all season. Aisha came from a very, very tough household. When she came onto that court, though, that stuff wasn't there living on her own, working late hours, and trying to graduate. It would be easy for Aisha to walk away. I'm very proud of myself. I'm not a quitter. 
She could miss 100 shots in a row, and she, and she may very well have missed 100 shots in a row, but she loved taking every shot that she took. She loved every chance she had to be with those teammates, to play with those teammates, to joke with them, to wear that uniform. Nothing meant more to her. Most kids in the inner city are not, you know, expected to do too much with their life. We're supposed to barely graduate high school, and for the girls, we're supposed to pop out a lot of babies. I plan to prove everybody wrong. I plan to do what everybody expects me not to do. <laughs> Aisha was an eye-opener to me. Without basketball, I don't know where Aisha would have been. It may not have been as good a story as it's going to be. Lady Pirates on three. One, two, three. Lady Pirates! The kids are the ones that are punished for our bad decisions. Every day the kids are punished for our bad decisions. And it breaks my heart. Paseo's senior recital, Coach Caleb Clifford and the rest of the crowd enjoy the jazz trio, Groove 101. While he doesn't want to make this a sports versus arts debate, Caleb Clifford calls the school district's decision to drop sports at Paseo and focus purely on the arts a mistake. Sitting just a few rows up from Coach Clifford, Paseo's principal, Dr. Juanita Hempstead, disagrees. I think our students are very talented in the arts, and it's really not going to make a difference because our community and school and the board got together and decided that this is what they wanted. Sports and the arts are uh, working at Different, well, they're not working at different times. Sometimes those sports clash. And what we want to do, this is a performing arts school, so we want to focus on the arts. When I first came into Paseo three years ago, uh, and I was asked to volunteer on some of the teams, I did not know about the school board's decision in athletics. It had already been made. And whenever they started telling me that, I, I couldn't believe it. I, I said, you know, why are you taking away these opportunities? And they said, well, we want them to have a chance to do arts. And I thought, okay, so I'm going to pay attention to this. I said, obviously, every kid at Paseo, after they finish school, is going up and doing an arts activity. Maybe there's not enough kids left to do a team. I understand that. I started watching 20, 30, maybe 40 kids are staying after school for activities. 500, 600, 700 kids are getting on the buses and going back on the streets of Kansas City. State was in uh, last, about two weeks ago. They said everything very positive about the school because all the arts was amazing. We bought them in this gallery and they couldn't believe what they saw. They said, are you sure your students did this? We said, of course they did because they couldn't believe that this is coming from our students. Now they'll tell you that they want this to be a pure arts school, that they want Paseo just to have arts and that's it. But you come after school and there's a robotics team which is doing great. They're doing great things with the kid, but they're not asked to leave. There's debate teams, they're not asked to leave. There's many other clubs and activities, but the one group they asked to leave, athletics. They told us we couldn't stay around. Now they said pure arts, but that's not pure arts. I think math is extremely important, but just because I think math is extremely important, I don't want to give up on English. I don't want to say, all right, go to math classes and no English. Because what happens? We're going to have kids that aren't well-rounded. Kids that don't have opportunities, that don't see things in the world. Ladies, eyes up here. I guarantee you and I promise you, no matter what it is, no matter where you are, your effort, your ability to put your energy into it will determine the result. You've got to say, I'm good enough to have this. I can guarantee you Dr. Hempstead's not going to walk in my office tomorrow and say, I'm giving you a promotion today. I've got to go earn it. I can guarantee you Brandy's boss is not going to come to her and say, promotion just because you're Brandy. Now Brandy's working hard, Brandy's going to work every day, she's going to earn it. To me it's life and death. We are hurting these kids' future by not doing things right. We are hurting them by not improving our programs. We are not allowing them to succeed, not just athletically, but in life. This is also Paseo Academy. Cell phone video of a fight posted on YouTube 
is nothing new from the hallways of high schools in the Kansas City, Missouri school district. West Virginia. Sergeant Edmund Thomas has a big title, assistant site-based manager for the district's safety and security department. You eat and go to sleep. You don't want it. It don't taste good. I'm good. Oh, I'm sorry. Basically, his job is to patrol the district's seven high schools and help prevent scenes like this. I think it's to the point the kid, oh, I don't go to school because I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared, you know. So school is, you have to go to school. Come on, how you doing, boy? You getting ready for it? You playing? You coming out? Football? Yeah. Okay. Sergeant Thomas has held several different coaching positions at many of these schools. He's seen firsthand the difference between athletes and other students when it comes to disciplinary issues. Very rarely that I get to a scene or be at a location that there's some athletes that's actually fighting. But still, he knows avoiding fights and other trouble is just part of the challenge these students face every day. I wouldn't use the word scared, but you know, you adjust to whatever type of environment you're in. You don't have to adjust to it, bro. Adjust to whatever environment you're in. But what if you can actually leave that environment? Say, to the suburbs. Four years ago, freshman Travis Relliford was a rising star for the IL at Central High School. He had a chance to leave and left. He took his talent 10 miles to the west, across the state line, seemingly to another world. While playing at Bishop Miege, a private Catholic high school, Relliford received a basketball scholarship from one of the top programs in the country, the University of Kansas. The path Relliford took is familiar to those around the IL. Tonight, Relliford's Bishop Miege Stags are playing a district playoff game against another one of Kansas City's premier private schools, St. Thomas Aquinas. Located in the heart of Kansas City's suburbs, it's clear that the Saints are a factory for state titles. They're running out of space for their championship banners. This one from 2001 came with the help of another former IL product who left for the suburbs, Ebony Halliburton. It's all smiles for Ebony Halliburton and the Saints. 46-41, St. Thomas Aquinas. After leaving Northeast High School following her freshman year, Ebony became a big star for St. Thomas Aquinas. She moved in with the family of a friend from her summer league team. Still, at times, she felt out of place. It was hard. I was the only black girl in the whole school. I'm far from races or prejudice, but when you, you've been around um, like this environment and then you get sent out and you in a suburb with a uh, different uh, economical class. You know, everybody got cars, and I'm used to catching the metro bus, the bus, the city bus, and you got, you going to school with kids that got Land Rovers and, and Hummers and stuff like that, and you like, man. One day before our game, my brother called me, and he was like, man, he was crying. He's like, come home, Ebony, come home. He was like, man, it's hard, man. And you out there, you left us, Ebony, come home. I was thinking like, man, am, am I a traitor? Am I a traitor? I just left, but in me, I knew it was the right thing. But a late night phone call about her younger brother, Lester, had Ebony once again questioning her decision to leave for the suburbs. It was three o'clock in the morning and Ms. Cook came down the stairs. I could still hear the stairs now, like, cause at nighttime she never come downstairs at three o'clock in the morning. So I got scared because I knew it was something crazy, you know? So she came downstairs and she said, somebody in your family died. As Soon as she told me that, I broke down like a little baby. I was in the bed and I like, I like cry, I like start like, I don't know what happened, but I just said, Jesus, I was like, it hurt me so bad. And she told me it was Lester. 
And uh, man, it was, it was so hard, so hard. He was next door to my mother's house and somebody came up and shot him six times and uh, shot him in the head and, and he died. I knew I was at a good place at Aquinas, but at the same time, the thought of, man, if I was there. You look cute, you say you're sick, but you don't look sick. How did you feel, bro? What, what hurt? Do anything you hurt, bro. Uh, He'll be able to sleep in about a, another couple of minutes. When her college playing days were over, Ebony came home. She returned to live with her grandmother, Sarah, who recently suffered a stroke. This is a picture of my grandma. A picture of my grandma when she was a, a hot, little, cute little mama. You thought she was cute, didn't you? Mm -mm. Yes, you did. I've been thinking she's going to kick me out, but... She, 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 she haven't kicked me out yet, so <laughs> sometimes I get in the bed with Grandma and I do like this and she be like, get out of here! And I come in there and I do like this and I start kissing on her and she be like, Ebony, okay, okay now. And then I start tickling her and stuff and she be like, get mad at me. Well, she don't get mad at me. She just laugh and then she, oh, then she call her friends on the phone like, yeah, my granddaughter got in the bed with me today, last night. Now back at home and with her grandmother doing better. Grandma, are you, are you, can you come in here and sit with me? No. <laughs> Ebony wanted to give back even more. She had her choice of a couple of different assistant coaching jobs. Another tough decision, coach at a suburban high school, or this time, stay home. Somebody told me, don't go to the don't go to the inner city. You'll be 40 years old before you know it, trying to pay your bills because there's nothing going on in the IL. Hey, check it out, y'all. Going down, going down in the zone. Coming back, we're gonna be in the man to man. I got Tasia. Right now, who you get? Ebony hey. did not take that advice. Instead, she came back to the IL. You coming right off of here like this? And then you got the As an assistant coach at Central High School, Ebony has been reunited with her freshman coach, Karen Jamison. I pick and I open up. Look how I got exactly. Then I go to the ball. Exactly. Come to the ball like you want it. Ebony is uh, a lot further along than I was when I was her age. Uh, as a coach, and uh, when I started at Ebony's age, I think I was more so afraid and the children didn't know that. Ebony's not afraid because she used to be one of them. I come from the inner city. You know, I was born and raised here, and so I know the struggles and some of the curses, like some of the repetitive cycles that need to be broken. But I also know if you can just reach one, you know, you reach one, you teach one, and then that slowly breaks the cycle. It's a big game, y'all. Come on, sold out crowd, come on. Y'all ready? <laughs> Ebony has connected with these girls beyond the basketball court. Growing up herself on the northeast side of Kansas City, Ebony has seen it all. In and out of foster care, at times homeless, a mother on and off drugs, an absent father in and out of work, abused. Ebony knows her story is not original. I was once one of these kids, you know, and they wanted more. But because of the environment, you can't walk around being soft because someone will step on you. So a lot of times you, you walk around like you're cool, so you won't get broken, you won't get hurt. But when I had the chance to kind of uh, work my way through the hardness, it's just a soft person wanting wanting to go to the next level. So that really tore me up and really, I really said, wow, I can relate. Hey, D it up, turn the D. Jesus! The inner city kids, it's just one word, is they, they need a chance. They need a chance and they need someone to let them know that they can do it. Y'all missing the little things. It's just like life. It's the little things that's going to hurt you. Coaches like Ebony Halliburton and Karen Jamison 
intend to be the only voice of confidence these athletes will hear. Let's make good decisions on the floor. Just talk about making good decisions. And keep in mind, when I say making good decisions, it starts when you wake up in the morning. One of the many problems facing teams in the IL, consistency. Take a knee. Please don't make me embarrass you on TV. Please. Lately, a coach's tenure at a school come on, come on, come on, come on. lasts about a year or two. Start this over. Everybody back down. This is horrible. That you know it takes a village to raise a child. Quit acting like you brand new. Well, you know, my opinion is that these kids are running through the village, but nobody's opening the doors and giving these kids the information that they need. Pick this up and we'll Lincoln this. Preps head football coach Roger Franks Pick this up. is the league's most tenured coach. This is his fourth season leading the Tigers. Don't let these people just get this damn trophy. You gonna give it to him like that, Cassie? You wanna give it to him, huh? Do they deserve it? No shot. Have they worked harder than you? No shot. Have they worked harder than you? No. Have they worked harder than you? No. Then act like it. Let's go. Let's go. Set. Anybody can be a part of the problem. So I'm one of those folks that just felt that I wanted to see and be around when things change. And so in order for me to do that, I had to get down and dirty and come put some work in. So that for 13 years, that's what I've been doing. We call this the dungeon. Low pay, small support staffs, no junior high feeder system, below average facilities are just some of the reasons coaches come and go. You give me the same resources of every other school and it's my responsibility to win. Coaching in the IL goes beyond the job description of teaching X's and O's. These coaches are part-time parent, part-time social worker, some use their own money to help pay for an athlete's physical. Look at it done, son. Just to give those kids just that advantage or just give them that ability just to stay in the game. And I'm talking about the game of life, the game of the workforce, the game of being a husband, the game of being a provider for your children. So that's my goal in coaching. It's not just about winning ball games and acting those. I'm trying to really give young men a vision. It's a big game, Lincoln versus Central. A rivalry that dates back 100 years. The IL Championship is on the line. It's the biggest crowd of the season. Metro Sports is here for the high school game of the week. It's a big game. Tonight, Roger Franks and his Lincoln Prep Tigers look to clinch their fourth straight league title. Let's go. On the other sideline, Central head coach Henry Newell. Hey, line. Let's go. Come on. Four receivers to the left side. They're going to throw it back and then throw the wide receiver pass. And that's good for Morgan. Oh, wow. That double pass. Oh, man. That's going to burn his ass. Oh, look at him. Henry. Boy, you <laughs> hey. That's like slaughtering the pig, ain't you? You do not lose your focus and come down to these people's level. That right there hurt. Get your minds together. If you can't handle it, go sit your ass on the sideline. Get back in this game and get focused. Let's go, Let's go. go. Now let Let's go. Three years ago, Franks recruited Newell out of retirement to help resurrect the IL. If somebody wants to be a real football coach, this is a place to be. Yeah, these kids are, are not kids. They're like a, adults in a kid's body. Every game, you got to grow hard. Schools like Rockers and Blue Springs, they talk about being state champions. What we talk about is just having our ball players be alive when they're 18 and 19. And the clock will hit zero, and that'll do it. In the end, the game belongs to Lincoln Prep. As Roger Franks runs off the field, holding up four. The Tigers are now the IL champs four years in a row. That won't be the last time you're going to lose in your life, unfortunately. You understand that? Yes, sir. 
If you want to make excuses and blame everybody in the world, then you become another typical inner city team. There's no better place than football field or basketball court to learn how to overcome adversity. The lessons that they learn in football will help them their whole life. You're going to be a man a whole lot longer than you're going to be a football player. So act like a man. This is where I use the zone. No one had ever seen that zone before. So the sports writer called me and said, what was that you ran? I said, I don't know. <laughs> Jack Bush has given his share of emotional locker room speeches. 1973, 74. He has multiple scrapbooks full of memories. Central number one and final poll, who the hell? From his 52 years of coaching in the I.L. Of course, I got to keep these good golf scores here. 77, 74, 73, 71. The main one, but I shot a 68. And now I'm shooting, I'm 68. I'm now shooting about 86. Jack Bush is the face of the IL coaching fraternity. And they're going to move on to Columbia after winning one of the best games ever in the Kansas City area. Central has won it. It's like night and day. There's no comparison with what they're doing today and what we did 10, 15, 20 years ago. His basement walls are plastered with the past. Now, this would have been in 1952. I don't know who that guy is right there, but... For decades, Jack Bush shared more than his vision with generations of young men. He shared his style. <laughs> Look at all these uniforms. See the guys down there? See all those pants? That's what I used to do. That was a hobby. This is a serger and a blind stitcher. You put the stitch in like that and you turn it on the other side and you don't see it. So it's called a blind stitcher. Now retired, Jack Bush spends most of his time on several hobbies. But a lot of it is spent reflecting on what he considers better days for his beloved IL. Friday night and Saturday night, the field house would be like this. Certain ball games, they'd open up bleachers at both ends and would be packed. And I don't know uh, what caused that to die down, but and eventually it just got to the point where, and it just petered out, you know. And for what reason, I don't have the slide side there. What happened? Head to Ginger's in Raytown, Missouri, every Saturday morning, and you will hear that question a lot. What happened? 49 team, that was the only one we ever had that was unscored on and undefeated. And that was a hell of a football team. Each week, these alumni of the IL drink their coffee and wonder, how did the IL go from this? In 1956, Northeast versus East High School, standing room only, a marching band large enough to fill half the field, to this. Today's version of the Northeast High School marching band. Band director Osmond Fisher is actually thrilled that his pep band looks and sounds this good. This is the first time in 12 years that Northeast High has attempted to put together a band. What school's fear without the band? And what we're trying to do is bring back that spirit to say, hey, when you come to Northeast, you know, achievement and, and excellence is going to be what we're going to strive for. They are hoping to make their first public appearance at the junior high in the upcoming days. The Kansas City, Missouri School Board meets every Wednesday night. Good evening, we're going to get started. Portions of the meeting are open to the public. These reprobates over here are totally devoid of the intellectual capacity to administer this school district. Collectively, they do not have the competence to fill a temple. Community members get a chance to speak their minds. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm speechless. Thanks, Hope that that information is stricken from the records and minds. Negotiate business. What I'm going to talk about is 
policy procedures and the things that we all love when we finish a job, payments. Or even pitch a proposal. I'm here to make a proposal, but in the making of it, I'm not alone. Tonight, a rare conversation discussing athletics and the district. David Thomas, a PhD scholar and graduate of Southeast High, class of 1965, makes a pitch. The proposal simply is this, that the Interscholastic League Fieldhouse basketball court be named the Warren Jabali Court. Then known as Warren Armstrong, the Central High star is often included when debating about the greatest athletes of all time to come from Kansas City. You, you'd be standing there and you say, man, how did he do that? It's just such a list of people that we can get their jerseys and retire them and put them in the rafter just like they do everywhere else, just to show our young people the talent. And they that, further suggest that maybe a Hall of Fame. Why not? Yeah. Joe Robertson has sat through his share of school board meetings. He covers the district for the Kansas City Star. Through his reporting, it's easy to see where renaming the basketball court stands on the school board's priority list. We should, though, at the same time, put some money into that structure. As an education reporter, a lot of times, you know, no child left behind, the federal mandate, you know, the uh, emphasis on test scores and performance and, you know, and, you know math, science, and reading has uh, dominated so much. And everyone knows the right answers, and that is that the student that is trying to find his way through school, art might be the way that he finds his home and that gets him there and keeps him interested and engaged and it allows the other stuff to come in, the same thing with sports, you know, so everyone knows that, but um, when it comes to actually time, the line items and the budgets, you know, uh, that, that concern continues that it's, it's just talk. The district has problems looming threats of a state takeover, constantly fighting for accreditation, unprecedented superintendent turnover, 24 in 39 years, are just some of the problems at the top of a very long list. Just how bad is it? When the person in charge of the school district's public relations says this, I can make the can look pretty, but if the soda tastes like crap, it's crap. It's bad. Cynthia Wheeler Linden says she's seen and heard enough to write a book, or perhaps a sitcom. You've got your Kramers, you've got your George Costanzas, you know, you've got your like different characters. It's dark humor. I mean, it really is tasteless and dark humor, but it's dark humor. You sit there and you watch behaviors and you've got people who have doctorates but have absolutely no knowledge of a single working mother's perspective. Honestly, the most eye-opening and shocking thing is that education has turned into a business. And it appears to me from the inside that it's not been about the children for a long time. The Kansas City, Missouri School District has become a national case study when it comes to education and money. There's more to Kansas City than hot jazz, cool fountains, warm people, and famous barbecue. Decades ago, in one of the most famous desegregation cases in the country's history, a judge ruled and hoped that more than a billion dollars of new construction and new programs would help attract white students back from the suburbs. It was a social experiment that some would say did not work. Mary Sanchez is a nationally syndicated columnist based in Kansas City. You know, the idea was you make it bigger, lavish enough, and they will come. Well, it didn't happen that way. In many ways, it was a success in that it did improve things. Did it reach nirvana? Is this district suddenly, you know, have test scores off the charts and are all the parents highly educated and every child, you know, takes um, achievement courses and goes on to college? No. Solutions. School board president Dave Smith made a suggestion five years ago. He suggested sports as a possible solution. I don't believe that the district administration of uh, the last decade or two has viewed athletics as, as a viable educational uh, tool. As a power forward for the Central Eagles in the late 60s, and as the longtime president of the Greater Kansas City Boys and Girls Club. 
Smith knows firsthand the effect sports can have on these children. In 2003, he led a task force that produced a 20-page detailed plan suggesting sports as a possible solution. I don't know anyone cracked it open, not to speak of implemented it. I don't even know if anyone looked at it. There were goals and objectives and action steps. We also demonstrated through research where uh, this would in, you know, improve educational outcomes for kids who have had good experiences. It wasn't a priority. The superintendent uh, probably thought it was a neat idea, but he had uh, you know, loads of issues to address and to deal with. And we lost the opportunity to help kids through that kind of activity. But it's still time to do it if there's the commitment. Thank you, Susan. Another meeting, another task force. This time, Dave Smith hopes people will listen. The plan, start from scratch. Bring together community members of all walks of life. Parents, teachers, business leaders, state senators, the mayor, and Central High senior running back, Ricky Hicks. For me, I can't really talk about what goes on behind the scenes with the Kansas City School District. All I can talk about is what I see for myself, and that is parents should stop pointing the finger and blaming the school district for what it's not doing and point the finger at themselves and, and say what they're not doing. They're not stealing in their child to go home and study. Quit giving your child an easy way out and blaming people. So, Perhaps the answers are in Ricky's mom's kitchen. The rules of Tina Hicks' kitchen are simple. That's the only rule. Get your food and leave. She met her husband at her Southeast High graduation after party in 1979. They've had three kids come through the school district. One's already a college graduate. The other two, well on their way. She says there's no secret to their success. I don't think it's anything that's that special that I did. It's just what I had to do. I had to be involved. Come on, defense. Because everything, even a dog, needs to be guided. Let's go! Not that we were uh, rich people. We're not rich at all means or have a, a lot of money. It's just that you have to value family. Get him, get him! You know, you just have to value your family. An investment that paid off in a big way. This ceremony marks the end of a turbulent recruiting process. Okay, you ready? Ricky Hicks is just one of a handful of IL athletes to receive a full ride scholarship to play football at the next level. By signing this piece of paper, Ricky Hicks will get a college education for free. Central head football coach Henry Newell wastes no time using Ricky's scholarship as a teaching tool. Okay, listen up. We're going to get started here. Letters, colleges. I get these every day. William Harris, Alabama. I don't see William today, do you? That's where it goes. When you don't show up, that's where it goes. Kansas University, William Harris. William Harris, Iowa. William Harris, Purdue. That's for me, personal letter. Clegg Muhammad, Alabama, pretty good program. What do you think, Alabama? William Harris, trash. You don't, you don't understand why I'm doing that? If you can't come to practice, you have no business getting stuff from Alabama. One last one, uh, Darryl Job, sophomore. Anybody know what that gold thing means on there? That's from University of Notre Dame, sophomore. Now, men, Ricky didn't get where he's at by going home when he didn't feel like practicing. Is that right, Ricky? Nobody used to call here. You know why? Because they knew Central was an undisciplined bunch of hoodlums who would never amount to anything outside of the streets. Now we have Notre Dame. We have almost every good quality D1 school calling now because they think that you guys have potential and maybe enough heart to move on. Don't screw it up. Okay, two laps, stretch them out, let's go, hurry up. 
Hurry up, let's go. Let me see that thing. University of Notre Dame. It has been a great year of growth and character building at Notre Dame. We finished our season with back-to-back -back wins. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty good school, Daryl. Take it home, show your mama. It's district time in high school football. Hey guys, we gotta play at seven o'clock, whether you're ready or not. That means teams like the Southeast Knights Come on. must travel to the rural community of Pleasant Hill. Holy potatoes! Take your shirt tail in, quit looking raggedy muffin. A small victory for just making it this far. Starting the season with just 17 players, Southeast has survived. Stick your shirt tail in. You're not in the hood. With 17 kids, I mean, look out here, you know. <laughs> We're going to get tired shaking a hand at the end of the ball game. Well, I don't think you're going to find anybody in that locker room or on that sideline that says, I want to give up. A lot of games start this way for Southeast. A couple of nice plays. Good job, way to hang on to him, Pissant. Good job. Perhaps a highlight or two. But then, head coach Jay Lumen knows what happens next. Touchdown. Ten and a half minutes it took him. Ten and a half minutes, coach. That's almost a moral victory. It is a moral victory. <laughs> if there's any such a thing, oh, that ain't good. That ain't good. Oh, safety. Time out, time out, time out. One time. You find 17 young men that after three or four ball games realize they didn't have a thing to play for except each other and the game itself. That kind of commitment these kids showed demands respect. Now you all have a choice to make and I'm gonna let you make it. And I'm just serious as a dead gum heart attack. We can just fold the tents, piss on the fire and call in the dogs, call it the season, go on home now. In the second half, no white flags of surrender. Southeast puts together a couple of plays and eventually gets on the scoreboard. But before too long, the season is over. The Knights lose again. Better than a dat gum cannon going off in my ear. You had everything against you this year, everything. And you came out here and said, no, 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 no. I am not gonna go gently into that good night. I know you probably think it's some old man just bumping his gum. It's not true. I'm extremely proud of you in my heart for what you've done this year. <laughs> Come on. Come on, buddy. I understand, but this is just a phase of life, you know? It's a phase of life. Okay? You grow, you grow, you grow. That's what it's all about. You take what you've learned here and you take it to the next level, you hear me? A few weeks later, the district would officially phase out the football program at Southeast High School. You won, you were fast, put your arms out for me. About 6'5? Go ahead, boss. You good. You gotta check me, you ain't check the females. Don't check females. They got pistols too. No, they don't. Back in the city. Back to some familiar sights and sounds. I don't got that. You don't have nothing. You skinny behind weapons. Oh yeah. yeah good. It's Central's homecoming. The crowd is entertained by some electrifying dancing. And the lights go out. As the players head back to the locker rooms, the beat goes on. This isn't the first time an IL facility has failed, and there's a feeling among this crowd that it won't be the last. Vicki Morello has had enough. As a former coach, she plans to use her recent promotion from high school principal to district assistant superintendent to the IL's advantage. The, the heart of, of athletics in the Kansas City, Missouri School District has lost its focus. This is Vicki Morello. Her first order of business recreate a culture of pride inside the schools. 
three years ago, you would have never saw IL kids standing up during a game cheering, like you would go into the suburban schools and see. Our students are standing. Just by taking athletics under her umbrella of responsibility, along with curriculum, Morello says she's seen instant results. Anything that you turn around and give a, a look to and put a, a focus on and encourage and give resources to, it grows. Can I do it alone? No. So, for the first time since the mid-90s, the school district has hired a full-time district athletics director. Morello hired a familiar face, Ed Corporal. She knew Corporal from her days as principal at Northeast. He was coaching the varsity basketball team. I could remember sitting on the bench. So I was like, if I ever had a chance to run this district, well, I would change a lot of things. Corporal started the job three weeks into the school year. He hit the ground running. Right away, he emphasized marketing and promoting school spirit. He hired a DJ, professional photographers, and implemented new district-wide policies, like dress attire for the league's coaches. We all know us high school coaches, we don't get paid that much. And when you probably break it down, you probably get maybe a penny an hour. What you do, you're doing because of the love of the sport or the love of the kids. See, that's one thing I can say about me as a coach. And as I take as AD, I have a passion for this. People say Ed Corporal is a smooth talker, skills honed in his days with the CBA, a minor league basketball league. But a few months into his new job, his sales pitch of a brighter future for the IL began to be challenged. I think that's what really bothers me that keeps me up at nighttime because I'm working so hard to try to change things for the veteran and then there's always some roadblocks, there's always some obstacles. Those obstacles came in the form of questions from some of Corporal's fellow coaches and administrators. The thing about being, I feel like will make me successful as an administrator, as an athletic director, is because the competitiveness in me, the athlete in me. It's like, I won't let them beat me, I'll beat them before they beat me. Let's go. We're trying to get leaders out here. Somebody's got to be a leader. Hey, you want to be a leader today? Let's go. Lost in the shuffle. We're getting better. This week-long free football camp for students, sponsored by the NFL. I like it. I like it. The IL schools had sent students to this camp in deeper. for five straight years. But when the district failed to show interest for a sixth year, a neighboring school district jumped at the chance. Many point to the lack of proper youth development as the root of many of the IL's problems. While several districts rely on large, organized youth programs that feed directly into the junior highs and ultimately the high schools, the IL counts on teams like this one to get kids interested in athletics. One, two, three, ah, one. Akeem Kearns played youth football. Two, three, eight, He's about to graduate from Lincoln Prep. He's been offered a full-ride academic scholarship to the University of Missouri, but he's contemplating a football scholarship from a smaller school in southern Missouri. We ain't look nothing like when we was little, you know. Where? Let me see. Akeem's older brother, Saeed, doesn't have those choices. Shot in the back, he was paralyzed for almost two years. I still count my blessings because it could have been worse. It could have been forever. Saeed did not play sports growing up. He says he chose a different path. What you want to do in life, you usually start, start off when you're younger. You know what I'm saying? So I think that would have took up a lot of my time instead of just running out here in these streets. We call it hood living, man. It's just, it's all good, but it ain't. It's Super Bowl Sunday. Saeed is watching the game with Akeem and their younger sister, Asha. You better quit. <laughs> you quit. Born with Down syndrome, Asha is recently home from yet another heart surgery. That's a close up for me. It's hard not to notice when Asha's home. Hello? Who's calling? Hello? Still crammed up at his grandma's house with several of his relatives, Akeem's life remains complicated. Akeem's parents, now separated, have both spent multiple stints in jail. That's another story. That's another book. So, as the older brother, Saeed looked after Akeem. And Akeem looked up to Saeed. He coming in throwing me money. Hey, go get you some shoes. Hey, go get you some clothes. Go get you a game. When well, I'm seeing that, I ain't got no money. This is running through my head. Dang, you know, maybe I should go do something like that. 
When you think about it, I see, you know, Dad's my brother, you know what I'm saying? He ain't doing good. It's been a tough year for Akeem Kearns. Look at that. But after 17 others just like it, not much can faze him. Let's see. You, he's that brother. The hard hits of a big game have become a welcome distraction. If I didn't have football, I would probably be in the streets, no doubt about it. When you take sports away from some people, what do you leave them with? Some people, that's all they got. It's another Lincoln Prep pep rally. The end of the school year is within sight. They call it spring fever. It's easy to get distracted. But Akeem says the prospect of playing football and getting a free education is plenty to keep him focused. I'm not trying to be, you know, stuck in my people's house, you know, my whole life. I'm trying to get as far away now, you know, so that's something I couldn't deal with, man. I'd be sick to my stomach. Over at Paseo Academy, for Aisha Kabin, the toll of living on her own and working long hours has started to catch up with her. Sometimes when she comes in, she seems kind of down, you know, blue, depressed. Her grades are slipping. Her attendance is down. The idea of graduating is beginning to fade. I'd like to get here just, just a little bit on time, a little bit more. It's her basketball coach who has stepped in. Next Thursday, I will come and ask Mr. Kindred, does Aisha have her makeup work in? And will you have it in? Yeah. Here, Caleb Clifford plays the part in these parent-teacher conferences. Sometimes a kid can get lost. It's our job to make sure they don't. It's our job to give them a place, to give them a home, and to give them somebody out there that they know, no matter what. Why be a beast when you're capable of being an ace? He may not always be happy with me, he may not always think I did the best job in the basketball game, but he's going to fight for me. It's playoff time, and for seniors like Delfino Jaquez, any game could be your last. Delfino is surprised he actually made it this far. Growing up in one of the roughest neighborhoods, he's had one brother shot and killed, and two more drop out of high school. Now he's just weeks away from becoming the first in his family with a high school diploma. Sports really, for me, helped me out a lot. If I never knew how to play sports, I wouldn't know what to do right now. Delfino's team loses. Lincoln beats Northeast, and the Tigers advance. Delfino's season is over. He's not thinking about that diploma right now. I gotta do something with my life. I can't fail no more. If I fail, I gotta try to succeed, you know. Earlier that night, it's Ebony Halliburton's chance to relive her championship days through the Central Eagles team she's helped coach this season. Yeah! It's an easy win and the celebration starts early. Ebony remembers what it's like to experience pure joy, especially when everything else in your life can be so tough. The kids in the IL, they just need direction. The people that are willing to give that direction and instruction, not, not looking at the negative, but if you're going to see the I.L. doesn't have this, doesn't have this, doesn't have this, and you're not willing to do anything about it, then don't talk, because nothing's getting better. When Ebony isn't coaching at Central or watching after her ailing grandmother, you can probably find her here, working out and training next to some of the city's top athletes. Though her college basketball days were disappointing, Ebony never gave up the dream of playing professional basketball. People always say, follow your dream, but when the dreams don't go exactly how the people think the dream should go, then they'll say, oh, maybe you need to try something else. But I'm following a dream, and 
I'm not gonna stop until I get it. At the airport, you nervous? Ebony sits with one of her old high school rivals and best friends, Marshall Campbell. They're headed to Tampa, Florida, site of the women's final four. Ebony has been invited to try out for the WNBA. It's been a rough, rough life, but just like the kids at Central, they got thrown so many blows, but, but why, why would you lay down? I just got right back up and nothing's gonna stop me, you know? It's graduation week for the Kansas City, Missouri School District. Every night, another graduation ceremony. It's time to say goodbye to the class of 2008. But before the big night, it's a party. Akeem Kearns is having a good time. With both his father. This, this is what I look like, you know, in uh, 10 more years. Hopefully not. <laughs> Hopefully not. And his mother, recently out of jail. He enjoys dancing with his grandmother and the rest of his family. Yeah, you see that? For Ricky Hicks, it's a race against the clock as he puts a new shine on his powder blue Chevy. Yep. Aisha Kabeen takes a break from her hair. I don't know how I'm gonna get my hat on. I'm gonna fit over my crimps. To welcome her mother, who is blind. She just came up from Atlanta. What color is your cap and gown? It's black. Our school colors is black and white. Oh, black and white. Yep. Man, let's go. Let's, let's see what I'm working with right now. And Delfino Jaquez still can't tie a tie. <sighs> And some people be like, what school are you going to go to? I'm like, I still don't know yet. They're like, why not? You should go to college, blah, blah, blah. I actually feel like I'm, I'm somebody, man, because everybody asks me what I'm going to do, you know. That's because people care about me. Today is a good day. Uh, oh, my gosh. I'm going to say forget it. I'm just going to go like that. And like they're going to be able to see it anyways. I've been waiting for four years my high school career to finally put on the cap. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh no, don't mess it up. I mean, I'm excited, but I'm not all nervous and anxious. Hey, most of you, I'm just, it's a regular day for me. It didn't hit me until actually I got the paper and I said, my teacher signed it, and I was just sitting there and I stood there for a minute and I said, woo you know, that, that's it, I'm done. I, I did it. of the class of 2008, I see spirit, I see hope, I see life, I see greatness, and most of all, I see the success stories. I want each of you to see and believe you have the ability to be the next mayor of Kansas City, the chief of police, a teacher in an elementary school, an owner of a construction company, a professor at a university, a scientist for the Bear Corporation, a manager of a hotel, a nurse 
a broadcaster, an engineer, and even the superintendent of the Kansas City, Missouri School District. Remember, where you are tonight is the launching pad of where you're going next. Ricky Hicks. Alicia Tabin. Delvino Jaquez. Martin Kearns. To my senior class of 2008, this will be the last thing we do as a class. One, two, three. Okay. Helping me out now. Let's see. Let's see if Steven knows how to tie a tie. Okay, it looks nice. I don't think, you know, as a documentary producer, I'm supposed to interfere with the subject like that. <laughs> but when somebody needs help, hey, you gotta help them. <laughs> 